Good morning. Welcome to Father John's Coffee Break here at Holy Name. So three uh, girls died and they arrive at the pearly gates together and St. Peter comes out to meet him. He says to the first, who are you? He says, I'm Mary. He says, what did Mary do? And she, Mary said, I ran an orphanage for 25 years. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. He says, great work. He says, come on in, come on in. Really delighted to have you. Turns to the second girl, she says, who are you? She says, I'm Sheila. What did you do? She says, I worked in an ER for 25 years. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Come on in, come on in. Great work, great work, great work. Turns to the third one, he says, who are you? And she says, I'm Nancy. She says, and what did Nancy do? And she says, I worked at a HMO. And Peter says, oh. and he scratched his head. Okay, he says, you're pre-approved for three days. So this morning I'd like to talk to you about the Eucharist, the Eucharist as vigil. So the night before an execution, people wait outside, hoping and praying that what's expected to happen will be delayed in some way, that someone is going to do something. Vigil is the same. Vigil is waiting for someone to do something. As Christians, we're more familiar with the Easter Vigil, where we await in anticipation for the dawn of the resurrection. The Sunday Eucharist too is a vigil. It hopes for transformation in our lives. By participating in the Eucharist, we are opening ourselves to the transformation by the Lord. That transformation happens, but it's like the grass growing. It's very hard to see it. It's like our, our lawns. The, uh, we look at the lawn and there seems to be nothing happening. And then all of a sudden we look at it and say, oh, that needs cutting. And so it's imperceptible. And uh, so the way that the law transforms us is very much the same. But however, over a period of time, it does become more noticeable. I read somewhere that the way you know that you're growing spiritually is when uh, the liturgy of the church starts to become more meaningful for you. Eucharist leads us into communion with the Lord. In a very intimate way, we receive himself the, uh, into ourselves and it becomes part of ourselves and we become part of him. It is a coming together to wait with each other on the Lord. As Gerhard Lofink puts it, the early apostolic communities cannot be understood outside the atmosphere of intense expectation. They were communities awaiting Christ's return. They gathered in Eucharist for, amongst other reasons, to foster and sustain this awareness, namely that they were living in wait, waiting on Christ's return. The Eucharist also prepares us for our face-to-face -face encounter with the risen Lord. Our whole lives are a preparation for this moment, as they say, along with taxes, it's the only sure thing in this life. The Eucharist is a celebration of Christ's resurrection, which is a glimpse into the future, the future life waiting for us, and also participation in the great banquet at the end of time. Most people have no problem with the concept of death, but what people do get anxious about is the process of dying. And so one of the things we uh, often pray for is an easy death. We all want to pass away peacefully in our sleep. The Eucharist then is future orientated. As St. Thomas Aquinas reminds us, O sacred banquet in which Christ is received, the memory of his passion recalled, and the pledge of future glory given to us. And also said, Pope Benedict XVI tells us that it is by eating the body of Christ that the people become the body of Christ. The church as the body of Christ exists to carry on Jesus' mission in the world to bring people to the glory of God. The Eucharist therefore is understood entirely 
in a dynamic perspective in which the Church is inseparable from the Eucharist. The Church is at the heart of the Eucharist and the Eucharist is what it is to be Church. Since the very beginning the Apostles and disciples were faithful to the breaking of the bread as Luke tells us in the book of Acts. The Eucharist defined who they were, followers of the risen Christ, sent out into the world to spread the good news about the mercy and forgiveness of God. They gathered to be fed and to be sent out. And the same is true for us today. We are gathered to be sent out. The, uh, as the words of the priest says, go. The, at the end of Mass, we're to go into the world, to spread the good news, to be missionaries in the world. And as St. Francis tells us, when we preach the good news, if you have to, use words. <laughs>